Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chats with Children. I hope you're safe and well. Today, I'm delighted to be rejoined by my special guests, John Bardsley and Aaron Lamb from Thermo Fisher Scientific, who, if you may remember, did a Chats with Children with me in April talking about nitrosamines. And we are going to be following up that conversation to talk a bit more about nitrosamines today. So, gentlemen, how are you both? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you, Ms. Well, I'm glad to hear. I hope you both had a lovely summer. So yeah. far, yeah, I spent most of mine in Scotland, actually, which was lovely. We got we got sunshine for like two weeks. It was beautiful. I'm glad to hear it. What about you, Aaron? Yeah, pretty good. Like, I went away a few weeks back. The, week, the weather was pretty good. But, um, yeah, good to see you again anyway. Um, yeah, well, it's lovely to see you, actually. Yeah. Right? And uh, as you'll see, my son was spent decorating. So I moved into a new office. You can see I've had to repaint it with the, with the corporate orange stripes, which my wife hates, but I put <laughs> in just to make sure that I got a bit of branding in the room. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. So before we start talking about nitrosamines, um, perhaps one of you would be kind enough to give us a quick overview of your own backgrounds and about Thermo for those who not, who've never heard of Thermo Fisher, although I think the whole world has heard of Thermo Fisher. Yeah, sure, I can do this. So, um, yeah, Thermo uh, Fisher Scientific is the world leader in, in certain science. So um, we provide instrumentation and services to a whole breadth, from, a whole breadth of different um, organisations and, and uh, application types, um, mainly around life sciences. So uh, my name is John Parsley, so I'm the marketing manager for Pharma and Biopharma within uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific with a, a real focus towards pharma. Um, my background is very analytical, so I spent most of my career in bioanalysis labs, actually, um, in large pharma organisations. A little bit of time spent in CROs as well um, as part of a lab management team. Um, and then when I first came to Thermo seven, eight years ago now, I, I spent the majority of that time in lab applications. So as part of our columns and consumables group. Uh, so really kind of gave me a good background as to what customers experience, being able to utilize my own analytical experience. Um, and then I moved into marketing. So um, essentially I, um, you know, I helped to promote and to find um, the right places for our products and find the right solutions for our customers in that area. Brilliant, John. And Aaron, a quick background on yourself as well. Yeah, sure. So yeah, very, very similar background to John. We've been at Thermo for a similar amount of time. Um, you know, joined in application specialist roles and then more recently moved into the pharma biopharma team. My background is from a pharma as well. So I used to work for a large uh, CRO called Intertech uh, and that was mainly doing, you know, batch release analysis, pharmaceutical method development, nitrosamine testing, thankfully enough. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a background in that and uh, yeah, really happy to be back on the, uh, on the vlog with you today, Riz. Fantastic. Well, look, um, we will put the in, uh, initial interview we did in April uh, in this post when we put this up live. But let's start with a very basic question for those who, who haven't seen the first one. Why is it important to analyse nitrosamines? You know, if you don't mind, give me a quick overview. That'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I won't go into a massive description because we'll have the original post. But um, essentially, nitrosamines are they're small molecules, right? They're formed by a reaction between nitrates or nitrates um, with certain amines. We've been monitoring them for years in food products like cured meats and tobacco products, but more recently they've been found to be contained within certain drug, pro uh, drug products, um, ranitidine, sartans and metformin, some of the more famous ones, um, at some quite worrying levels. Um, and this is important because nitrosamines are classed as possible human carcinogens, right? So long-term exposure can have potentially some pretty nasty side effects. Um, it's important we measure them so we can understand the level of the impurities in the drug products um, to either kind of make sure they're at a safe level or eliminate them completely before they go into the general population. Um, after discovery of these, recent regulations have, have since evolved and they've called out a specific list of nitrosamines that are classed as kind of um, uh, um, drugs, uh, nitrosamines of interest that we want to monitor, want to make right. sure they're removed, and also uh, released you know, specifications for those. So we must make sure that these nitrosamines are below these levels in order to release your drug product. In fact, there's been quite a few drug product recalls um, as you can imagine, that's quite expensive because of because of these nitrosamine compounds being present at some high level. So it's really important that we can accurately measure and understand the levels of these nitrosamines that are being you know that are being found in these products. Yeah, well, I remember the metformin getting recalled actually a certain batch because right. of it as well uh, last year, maybe if I remember correctly. There's so, been a few, and it can be very very costly. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. Yes. Yeah. So, what are the challenges faced by people analysing nitrosamines? Well, um, there's a few, right? Um, I think probably the first one would be sensitivity. Um, so the, the, the small molecules and the very small molecules and they're present at some very low levels. Um, low enough so they're not really picked up very well by some of the more traditional QC techniques, um, such as LCUV. Um, so this is why people are starting to look or have been looking for a while now at mass spectrometry is the kind of gold standard for, for that uh, detection here. Um, mass spec can, can get down to those low levels and can see these low levels accurate. Um, 
Having said that, the next problem would be selectivity. Um, so mass spectra and heroin are very selective, but what we're talking about here again is some extremely low molecular weight compounds, often in the presence of a very complex matrix containing many other very low molecular weight compounds. Yeah. Um, there's been some pretty well documented cases um, that even you know, push the mass spectrometry to, it, to its limit of selectivity uh, when combining it with interfering matrix components. Um, we can actually get false positives. It's been a pretty, a pretty um, well-known case actually of, of um, some drug product being released and actually being called back off the market, but then later found out it wasn't it didn't actually have as much nitrogen in compounds right. as they thought because of an interfering solvent um, contamination in there, which was so closely related in molecular mass to one of the nitrosamines of interest, they couldn't differentiate it with the methods they were using. So I guess the, the key challenge here is it's to find, identify and use the right combination of techniques to, to really accurately and consistently monitor these nitrosamines at these very low levels. Right. Aaron, have you got anything else to add to that? Yeah, I'd probably add, you know, sample preparation is a big challenge as well, right? You know, the, the, the types of drug matrices are very different. So, you know, there's a, there is a series of methods out that they, you know, they're analysing certain types of sartans, but, you know, one sartan is not exactly the same as the other. So, you know, when it comes to, like, revalidating methods, there's often challenges there, which, you know, uh, is, can be quite a headache. So that's what I think John, I think, answered pretty, you know, Pretty comprehensively there is right okay now i know you have recently launched or released a nitrosamine toolkit and i know that because i posted on it this week and it's had lots of views already uh, so tell me more about that why did you launch the toolkit well in, so when we're talking about a combination of techniques there's there's a whole bunch of ways you can perform this analysis right um, there was a whole bunch of different methods being put up by some of the regulatory authorities in the very early days that, that encompassed um, high resolution mass spec, uh, triple quadruple mass spec, LCGC. Um, so really a lot of what we get from our customers and you know, from everyone in the industry is what's the right way of doing it? And it's not one of those, those questions where you can say this is, you, you do this exactly sure. and that works for everything under every, under every circumstance. So there's a whole different combination of techniques you can use that is right for the particular cause you're looking for, whether it be for really intense um, and, um, and a really uh, confident screening, uh, method development set up, uh, checking the risk assessments to make sure there's nothing else in there that you weren't aware of, or whether it's routine screening, so you, you're confident you're only looking for compounds one, two, and three, you can just develop a method and screen for those rapidly. Um, so what we produce in this toolkit, which basically takes all those key components of what you might be interested in, what's important to you, talks about the different techniques and how they would affect each of those components and then kind of looks to identify the right the right way for you, the right path forward for you. Um, right. So it's, it's a difficult thing to do. If you search on the internet, you'll find everybody's got a thousand different ways of doing this. And so what we try to do is really comprehensively look at all the different variations, all the different techniques, and um, you know, really just look at the high level key points and say, you know what, if you're interested in just routine and monitoring of this nitrogen, mean, this is probably the best way of doing it. Right, okay. So as well as having all that information around there as well, we tried to make it useful and interactive as well. So we put in there things like interesting links from the FDA. We'll try and keep it updated with the, you know, useful regulatory links. As things change, we can, we can look to kind of bring all that information in. Um, and then, you know, if you're not into reading tons and tons, we also throw a few webinars in there for a bit of fun as well. So there's, there's webinars that we've had with both some of our internal experts and some of the you know, key opinion leaders in the field that can give their opinion um, on, on their process and their techniques and how they handle the challenge as well. Right. And Aaron, anything to add to that? Yeah, I don't know if I, John mentioned case studies, but often, you know, seeing what other people are doing in industry, you know, and their approach, you know, because like John says, there's not one way that you would do it. Um, you know, some labs would, uh, you know, they go for the most expensive orby trap on the market, whereas others looking, you know, in, in emerging countries would be looking, what, what can I do that's, you know, minimum fit for purpose as well? So, we, you know, we encapsulate that in some case studies, which are quite, quite nice to look at. Right. OK. Now, you mentioned sample prep a little bit earlier, Aaron. So as a pain point for industry, can you tell me more about sample prep? Yeah. So, you know, like I was, I was mentioning earlier, some of the validated methods for certain sartans, they don't work on other sartans without right. without modification. And, you know, it's due to the, the chemical properties. And, you know, I've quite often seen it coming from an application background that, you know, contamination of inlets causes, you know, issues with, you know, reproducibility, repeatability, that kind of stuff, you know, right. on the LC side, if you don't do like a, you know, uh, if you don't prevent the matrix from hitting the mass spec, then you, you obviously, you get a diminished sensitivity over time as the cone gets covered in, in matrix as well. 
Um, but from other aspects, you know, nitrosamines can actually form in solution when you're doing sample preparation, which obviously, you know, false positives is the ultimate no-no when it comes to batch release. Um, and so, you know, care has to be taken when, when you're doing sample preparation from that perspective and really minimizing the amount of uh, nitrite and these nitrosamine precursors is, is really important to do at the earliest stage of the development of the API, even before it gets to the drug product, because once it gets to the drug product, you know, you, there's no chance to eliminate it. So, you know, that's, that's another aspect as well. And then when we're moving towards the drug product, so, you know, for instance, metformin, which is used to treat diabetes, um, in its extended release form, it uses a polymer called hypermellose. And um, this polymer during sample preparation, it basically forms like a gel in solution. So, you know, actually um, coming to analyze the nitrosamines can be extremely challenging. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, problems that industry are facing at the moment. And we at Thermo Fisher are looking at devising new methodology to, to analyze these compounds effectively and uh, safely uh, without causing the formation of nitrosamine. Right. John, anything to add to what Aaron just said? That's very comprehensive. I think the challenge is, it's, it's not, it is everything Aaron just said, right? It's the ability to do the extraction and sample operation properly early and monitor it in, in a way that's suitable for the analysis you're going to do. Um, but then it goes a little bit beyond that as well. So it's, it's not necessarily just about the right sample preparation for one sample. What, what these companies are having to do is to potentially analyze nitrosamines in every drug compound, uh, every drug product that they produce, which is a, a breathtaking volume, right? If you, if you kind of think about it, every drug that's destined for human use needs to at least have a risk assessment um, associated with it. And if there's found to be a chance that nitrosamine may form, they need to be batch released on every single drug product they put out there. So the scale of this is quite critical. So it's not just, you know, the, the quality of the sample preparation is can we make it doable? You know, can we scale this up? Can we do this on a, on a, on a scale that's big enough to cope with the demand that's going to happen? Well, that's interesting you should say that because that leads on to my next question, which is about automation. Because obviously, I mean, having done lots of interviews with different people around automation as well, particularly around sample prep, but in other areas as well, that is an area where a lot of people will say that really does help with the uh, reproduce. Repro repro I can't even say it now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Reproducibility. <laughs> I knew you knew what I said. <laughs> Reproducibility, exactly. I don't know why I can't say it today. <laughs> and uh, to make it consistent in terms of the results so, so talk, talk about automation how can that help then in terms of the benefits in this area and how how would it work okay so you know when, when we're talking about you know sample preparation automation what we're really doing is minimizing user error right so we couldn't we could never as as, as hard as we try re reproduce the the you know the 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 repeat a bit repeatability that you can get with an <laughs> instrument, <spreading>. right? <laughs> um, but from the other perspective as well, like you know, we're looking at developing automated methods to do. We've got maybe I don't know. There's about seven or eight different FDA methods. What about if we could combine that into one? What about if we could analyze pretty much you know all of the drug products, all of the drug substances on the market, in in one or maybe two or three methods, right? That 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 would be very very highly beneficial. Um, especially as we move towards the QC labs. So, you know, uh, QC labs with pharma, mass spectrometry, just single quadrupoles uh, can, can strike fear in the hearts and minds of people. Uh, because, you know, predominantly, as you probably know, you know, HPLC UV is the, the way forward. So, you know, obviously these compounds, nitrosamines, they don't have a chromophore that, that, uh, it, that does well under UV, right? So, you know, mass spectrometry is the way forward. Um, and the, the way to simplify that is to have workflows that are automated, not only from a sample preparation perspective, but really thinking holistically in terms of, you know, processing the data so there's a minimal amount of user input. They can basically just check the, you know, chroma chromatography integration and then, you know, submit it uh, for, for review. So, you know, when we're talking about automation, we are talking about, you know, from sample preparation to report. Um, and, you know, with our, with our software, Chromelion, we have something called uh, CMBX file. Uh, and that really holds the key to, you know, this, this full automation package. It's got the, you know, the, the sample sequence, which can be automatically generated depending on how many samples you have. You say, okay, I've got one or two samples. It generates a sequence. You press run. It does the automated sample preparation. And then it processes the results and then the user just has to check over the report. 
So we're not there yet with this fully automated method for multi-drug products, but we're making good progress. And, you know, uh, we're hoping in the future we can get towards that end goal. <clears throat> Fantastic. Well, there's a lot of information there. So uh, you've got all these, you've got the toolkit, you're doing talk about automation and all these other things. So where can people get more information about nitrosamines? Okay, that's a good good question. So um, one one thing that they can do is on LinkedIn, I, I've actually got a pharma nitrosamines group. So we'll include that in the uh, in the detail section on the post. Um, so yeah, please sign up to that. We have uh, regular conversations with all our industry people from, you know, from regulatory and USP, you know, to, to people working in pharmaceutical companies, to CROs. Um, we have, uh, you know, regular events. So we actually had a, an event under CPHI, which is a big pharma company, uh, pharma event sure. uh, in, in India. So um, some representatives from AstraZeneca we're collaborating with on, on automation, uh, we're presenting there. And we also have uh, an upcoming event with the USP. Um, so some industry leaders in, in the field of nitrosamines talking about risk assessments, talking about analytical strategies. Right. And um, so that they can find out about that there as well. Um, for the toolkit, um, obviously we'll post that um, in the information section. Uh, the same with the webinars um, and also the, um, the nitrosamine webpage that we've just released. So that's only been out for a few months. So, you know, go, go and head there for more information. And um, yeah, we can hopefully start the conversation in, in the LinkedIn community. That's the best place, I think. Brilliant. Well, there's loads of information there. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for that. I hope uh, all the events go well. The group grows and flourishes. You get loads of people signing up for the toolbox as well. It sounds really exciting, really interesting stuff there. So, I really appreciate taking the time. I, I, I just to forgot me. one last thing, actually. Well, that's right. So, You've still got time to mention it, Aaron. Don't we, worry. We do have a webinar coming up on sample prep automation. So, this is on the 7th of September. It's by Giorgio Blom from AstraZeneca, senior right. scientist, very experienced in the field of, of uh, sample prep for. For, for nitrosamine analysis so yeah please sign up to that as well that'll be also in the information section well not to worry but the beauty of doing this is that we're going to put the post up we'll have all the links in it anyway so not yeah. to worry but that you, you got it in Aris. that's fantastic so anything else to uh, add gentlemen before we finish up no come engage with our with our uh our websites come engage with our community it's a wonderful community where there's a lot of conversation flowing and i, I employ you to go and watch Giorgio uh, talk at his webinar. It's a wonderful piece of work he's been doing. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, all I can say is thank you very much for sharing that information. It's been lovely to see you again. You know, it's been, time flies, doesn't it? It was April. It only seems like yesterday I spoke to you guys. Although you do do look actually fitter and slimmer. Not that you looked unfit last time I saw you, I <laughs> hasten to add. But <laughs> you, look sure. like you, you, look, you look like you've had a good summer. So I'm glad to see you both. And hopefully we'll catch up in person in the not too distant Absolutely. future. Absolutely. I'll try and I'll to sh shift some of those lockdown pounds before we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, viewers, I hope you found that useful. As you as you can see, there's a wealth of information out there around nitrosamines and the analysis of nitrosamines that Thermo are offering. So please check out all the links which are going to be uh, above the video. Join the LinkedIn group. Check out the webinar. Sign up from they are free, so you've got nothing to lose, and you've got great information there. Check out the toolboxes, loads of things, and also you can send questions directly to John and Aram either below the video, put them in the comments. I'm sure they'll be only happy to answer them, or send them messages directly on LinkedIn. They're both on LinkedIn as well. I'm sure they'll be happy to engage with you that way mm -hmm. as well. So all that's to say is, John, Aaron, enjoy the rest of the summer. What's left of it? It was lovely to see you again, and I hope you enjoy what's left of the summer and stay well. And everyone else, um, enjoy what's in the summer and uh, check out all those links. And until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye.